Android Dialogues, where we have bite-sized conversations with people in the Android community. I'm Gwen Dow, and I'm speaking with... Mike Evans. Hi, Mike. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. Um, I, I say this a lot, um, but I'm really excited to talk to Mike uh, today um, because uh, Mike, also, as, aside from being a cool Android developer, is a, uh, well, graduated from my university, the University of Maryland. Go Terps! Woo! Woo. Um, so, okay, so now that we got that out of the way, uh, Mike, uh, where are you actually based now and how did you get into Android? Uh, I'm based out of Washington, D.C., and I got into Android back in the cupcake days because I bought an Android phone and really wanted to put my own apps uh, on the phone and kind of just got started then. So. Sweet. Um, if you've noticed uh, our fabulous um, uh, outfits right now, um, if you heard about the Enos Matter shirts, uh, that was Mike. I should uh, put the link in the show notes. Oh, yeah. Are you actually going to? So this is Teespring. Are you going to like re... If enough people claim they want it, then it'll restart the whole thing and people can buy it. We'll link the, the Teespring in the show notes. Uh, and if you're interested, you should definitely check them out because look how sweet these shirts are. Actually doing a lot of great blog posts recently that I wanted to ask him about today. Um, and like you've done a few really great ones about like the different like Android Studio tools. Um, but you sound like you might have one uh, coming out soon about things that we might not know are in Android Studio. Um, and so like for instance, very recently, um, you revealed to us that you can actually, when you use find usages, which is an Android shortcut that I use constantly because I never know uh, where things are or they get used. Um, but in the process of using that, like a lot of times when you do find usages, you it ends up searching stuff that you don't give to um, uh, sense about. Uh, but Mike. Uh, actually tweeted very recently of uh, a great way for you to kind of uh, make find usage a little more streamlined, a little easier to use. And what is that? Yeah, so you can uh, apply filters to the what find usages actually looks through. And uh, if you're interested, you can see the tweet here. I always wanted to do this. Yeah. Click here <laughs> for the link. Um, like a lot of times there's so much like good stuff in Android Studio, but um, it's not even that you just don't know how to find things, but you don't know that there's stuff for you to find. Um, so Mike is going to tell us about maybe a couple of his like favorite things that you found out or that you know that we should find out about in Android Studio. Yeah, so I think a lot of people take uh, the kind of cool tips of Android Studio for granted because they just know them. But then when <laughs> you see, uh, you go to uh, we had like the Android Dev Summit uh, last month, and we saw there was a, a talk about like Android Studio tips and tricks, and it was super popular, and I saw it all over social media. And it made me realize that some things that people did know, not everybody knows. So uh, I've been trying to tweet out and write some blog posts about uh, some of my favorite Android Studio tips and tricks or IntelliJ tips and tricks so that other people who might not know about them can kind of get to use them. Um, so that, that find usages one was one. Uh, another one that I think is pretty cool that people don't seem to know about is that there's a smarter auto completion than you probably know about. Uh, if you just hit control space, you're probably familiar with that that autocomplete shortcut, but uh, if you hit com control shift space, it will give you like context aware, uh, like types for your autocomplete so that instead of just listing like every class that IntelliJ knows about, it will list like classes that actually fit the parameters of the method that you're uh, autocompleting. So it, it actually makes it a lot more efficient to use because you're not having to tab, 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 exactly. tab or not tab, but rather error down through like yep. hundreds of possibly hundreds of classes. And it probably will kind of let you know like, yeah, what the actual syntactically correct thing to put there. That's really awesome. Yeah, I've never seen uh, that when it suggests uh, like a long array, that be the thing that you're looking for. You know, you're always looking for like a, a particular class type or something. Mm -hmm. um, do you have like, just to whet people's appetites, because we do want them to go uh, and read your blog post, um, can you maybe give us like one more teeny awesome like Android Studio thing we, didn't, we might not know about? Yeah, so uh, if you're familiar with Leak Canary, that kind of functionality is now built into Android Studio. Uh, it was talked about at the Android Dev Summit, but it was a really long video if you were watching at home, so maybe you skimmed past it. But if you go into the memory monitoring tools, uh, there's a like find uh, analyze heap dump button that will kind of look through possible activity leaks and uh, kind of give you the trace back to where they started. So you don't need to be running uh, Leak Canary maybe or... Uh, is it actually replacing Leak Canary or is it maybe like... You could use it to augment. Uh, yeah, you could probably use it to augment Lee Canary if you don't have Lee Canary already set up, or mm -hmm. uh, you know you're running it, uh, your device is connected maybe. Or uh, I think Lee Canary has some issues uh, on Android M right now, and it, this will you know should still work on Marshmallow. Actually, there's one more that I want to mention because um, I'm a reg regex like 
fangirl, and I think Mike said that there's actually something really cool with regexes in, yeah. in your studio. So there's a intention for uh, editing like different language fragments, so you can edit JSON fragments and things like that, and one of them is a regex validator, and basically if you have a regex and you open up the intention selector, you can see uh, like a regex tester that will allow you to type in some test text for your regex and let you know if it matches or not, so you can instead of going online to some regex tester tool, like I think everybody comes to yep. love, that, uh, <laughs> you can just try it in your IDE. Awesome. So uh, you should definitely uh, go out and check check out Mike's blog post. Um, and he, you're always posting like really cool tips and, and stuff. Um, he's also actually uh, coincidentally the uh, one of the mods of Reddit's uh, R Android Dev uh, subreddit. So um, and you're always posting really cool stuff there too. So definitely Thank go you. check that out. I tried no, to. Yeah, no, like and I, I think that's like really um, important is that. Um, you know, things are always changing and then like, or there's things that, you know, just don't make the light of day for whatever reason and it's important to have awesome people uh, kind of putting those out to us. <laughs> we, we tend to talk uh, on our channel a lot about speaking um, and you actually gave some really cool talks uh, this year about annotation processing, um, which I feel like, um, I feel like there's, especially in like the last year and a half, there's been so many really great uh, libraries that have to do with annotations. Um, could you like maybe give us the broad strokes on, um, I guess, I mean, we all kind of know what annotations are, right? There's those little things that start with at that are probably in yellow in Android Studio that I guess uh, indicate certain things, but um, like certain libraries are able to kind of take those and kind of create you know, like some utility out of them. Yeah, so my talk was about uh, writing your own annotation processor, and if you haven't watched it, you should go watch it, but you probably used an annotation processor if you've used something like Butterknife before. Maybe you didn't know that's what it was, but uh, it basically uh, did some some processing of these annotations you add to your code to, to generate the boilerplate for you. Um, and obviously, one, it saves you the typing, which sometimes Java can be like pretty verbose, and two, like pre prevents you from have, making error-prone mistakes, like copy and paste problems. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, the I think like a one that really got me into annotation processing was uh, Deep Link Dispatch. Um, I think like a lot of people have Deep Link set up in their app, and they might have some like parsing logic to parse the intent and then break down the path that was the like and brought you into the app, yep. and then route you to the right place in your app based on like what was in the path, the route. Um, I know we did, and like you know, it was a kind of like just a lot of work to kind of update it every time we added new routes on the web. Um, so Deep Link Dispatch was just this neat neat tool that the guys at Airbnb wrote that allowed you to annotate your activities with uh, the Deep Link path and then um, the rest of that stuff gets generated automatically through an annotation processor. So. But is it fairly simple to kind of like get started? I mean, obviously, if you watch your talk, but I mean, would you recommend that to someone who just kind of thinks, hey, maybe I could kind of cut out some craft? Uh, I think it depends. I mean, there's some, the I guess, limitations and kind of the general fact that it's almost like metaprogramming sometimes makes it a little hard to like understand for your maybe first time or if you're a new Java developer. Mm -hmm. But um, there's a lot of good examples out there. Uh, and then a lot of, in the last, like you, like you said, in the last year and a half, a lot of new uh, annotation processes come out. So you can uh, have a lot of examples to choose from. Um, there's a lot, like a lot of simple ones which, uh, which allow you to kind of see how they're done without having like a lot of complicated code. So do you have any like favorite uh, like custom annotations? Yeah, so uh, some of my favorites actually are not related to annotation processing. They're the ones in the support library that you probably have used. Uh, and if you haven't, you should check it out. I wrote a blog post about that too. Uh, <laughs> but, but they're kind of just ways to like prevent errors in your code. You can annotate uh, like integers so that you'll know if it's a drawable resource ID. Yeah, there's a, tons of them actually that I think people don't don't uh, realize, but it, they're especially helpful, I think, if you're writing a library so that uh, other people who consume your library can make sure that they pass in the right things. Uh, like there's one called check result, which I think is pretty underutilized. Oh, cool. And so if you've ever used like string.trim or something, you may have run into the bug where you didn't realize that it doesn't actually trim the string that it's called on, it, tr it returns the trimmed version. If you annotate your method with a uh, check result, it will throw a little like right, yellow squiggly if someone does not assign the result uh, or check the result of, oh, nice. of the so, method call so that they know that like it does something and returns something, not just like operate on the string itself. Oh man, I definitely have made those kind of mistakes before. I'm totally checking that out. If people actually wanted to find you on the internet and see the other cool things uh, that you've done, where, where can they do that? 
Yeah, I'm on uh, Google Plus at plus Michael Evans and on Twitter at m underscore Evans ten. Cool. Um, and uh, do you have a uh, what's your blog at? Oh, michaelevans.org. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mike. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Awesome, and thanks, thanks guys for joining us. And see you next time. Bye.